Right, so welcome to our weekly look ahead webinar. We're going to be looking at some of the charts of major indices and commodities and currencies. If at any time you have a question, please just feel free to, to let me know. Send it through our chat or Q&A box and I'll uh, answer as best I can. But otherwise, going to go through just some of the most popularly traded uh, products with CMC Markets. So a bit of a topsy-turvy start to the week. Obviously, the big event last week was that we had numerous Fed speakers and Federal Reserve minutes suggesting that actually uh, June is a possibility for a rate hike and that uh, we could see two to three rate hikes this year. Now that's um, a bit more aggressive than the markets were pricing and so we've we've seen a bit of a snapback in the dollar and, and, and stock indices um, are basically trying to work out how to, to gauge this. Um, is this, you know, what is the resilience of stock markets to this? We'll quick look at the um, just the, the front month dollar index. We can see that we got a big old spike on Wednesday. Uh, Wednesday was when the, the minutes were released. And we gained a bit of ground for the following two days, but we've kind of stalled a bit um, just having um, having taken out those those peaks. Um, so we're at the highest since we since late March now in the, the dollar index. So we've seen similar similar moves in other currencies. Um, if we have a look at the the U.S. stock market. Uh, you'll see that we basically came in and, and touched into fresh lows since mid-March, uh, but we bounced off those lows. And so that's where we find ourselves at the moment, around 17,500 on the Dow. And you know, we're sort of, um, the reason we're going sideways a bit is because we've, we've, we've pushed through this uh, support on stocks, through this resistance on, on the dollar, uh, but do we follow through? is basically the question that's being asked at the moment. <coughs> we do have US GDP as far as economic data later this week. Uh, we also have uh, Mark Carney facing questions from the Treasury Select Committee on the uh, with regards to the British Pound. Obviously we've had more uh, scaremongering from the Remain campaign talking about a possible recession in the UK economy that would last a year if we voted to, to exit the, the Eurozone, uh, sorry, the, the European Union. Um, we did see a, an initial bounce higher in the pound from that, but actually we're, we're coming off a bit. Uh, but it's, you know, the pound's looking fairly weak, but um, you couldn't really call it broad-based dollar strength. The euro's still up a tad. And the dollar index itself, you can see, is pretty much flat. You know, those two looking pretty much... Um, identical. Source of weakness in, in um, dollar yen, we're seeing yen strength even though the uh, the economic data out of Japan was pretty poor. We had some trade numbers from Japan, really missed expectations, showing a big decline in the economy there. But um, the, the thing is that we've had this G7 finance ministers uh, meeting. This week we've got a G7 meeting of leaders so you need to watch that. It's a possible, uh, you know, some, some possible announcements to be coming from there. Unlikely. But the, maybe the one thing we could take away from the, the, the meeting of the finance ministers uh, was that uh, Jack Lew, the Treasury Secretary from the U.S., made some comments sort of suggesting that they believe that the movements in the yen have been pretty normal, or something to that effect. And just putting a little bit of political pressure on Japan not to intervene directly in the currency markets. And so Japan and China have been put on a watch list of possible currency manipulators, but they're not being labelled as manipulators as, as such, but more of a sort of shot across the bow from the US. So we don't, you know, we don't really see any need for you to intervene in currencies yet. So maybe while the thought before was 105 would be a level that the Bank of Japan would be gearing up to intervene, maybe that's dropped to 100 or sub 100. And so that's, that's, we're starting to see some pressure on dollar yen now. So uh, we've already had a quick look at the US 30. I mean, this is a quick overview of some of the, um, some of the events happening. Obviously happy to discuss 
what other topics you might be interested in but if we just delve into the charts now so for those who attended last week you'll recognize these confusing looking channel lines that I've got um, basically this rising channel here denoting the left and right shoulders of a possible head and shoulders pattern which we've broken down from we've now read yeah so you know this is the line here we've broken through false break back down again now we've retested the the bottom of it again we've rolled over a bit um, so we're basically we've broken the pattern but we're not seeing a decisive breakdown yet we're sort of retesting the underside of the um, of the pattern here uh, of the neckline of the head and shoulders so if if we roll over from here to my mind that means a uh, a test of the the 200 day moving average before we sort of find our feet again the actual objective with of this pattern um, as i mentioned last week is actually s below the 200 day moving average uh below I'm gonna do it again but it's it's pretty much in line with this low from the 10th of march so we're looking at um a few areas of support if prices do break down about 17100 is a 200 day moving average 17000 is a round number and then this low from March 10th and the projection from the head and shoulders pattern takes us to about 16840-ish. Mm -hmm. um, if we do if we do see a move back above here which I suspect could happen is I think the, the next area of resistance would be these peaks from the 16th and 17th of May and I think that would be very close to the top of this declining channel we find ourselves in here so then we could we could push up here and and then that will be the next test um, are we going to completely smash through the top of this head and shoulders pattern again it'd be a failed pattern which obviously if you're short on the breakout not a good thing but nonetheless it's quite a strong bullish sign if we can reverse a fairly obvious looking reversal pattern um, so switching gears to the uh, to the UK market, the UK 100. As you can see, Brexit. You know, maybe you could argue on the margins it's having some effect. Really, we're seeing pretty sideways markets here. Um, so maybe an element of waiting for the referendum. We've obviously got a month to go, as of now. Uh, but this kind of choppy sideways markets are pretty characteristic. Of, of across the western world at the moment so you can see we're pretty much at the same level we were on the first of march and um, we're nearing the first of june so almost nowhere for a quarter mm -hmm. so at the moment specifically uh, we had this same area highlighted uh, at last week's webinar the 6050 has proven support numerous times so it's held again and then we're just being capped on the top side now by the 200 day moving average uh, which falls just a little bit below this 2000, uh, 6,200 mark. So it looks like we're drifting down a bit again from the 200 DMA, but some some strong buying demand down at 6850 to me suggests a bit more likelihood of an upside break. And if global equities are moving together, that sort of speaks to a top at the a test of that declining channel in the US 30 that we looked at. If we do push through there. Then I think probably just the first area would be these uh, this support slash this resistance in around this kind of zone here, really the um, six six two sixty to six three hundred I think would be a kind of layer of resistance. Should we get a break back above the two hundred DMA, and then beyond there we're looking at the top of the trading range again, um, which falls around sort of six six four fifty you could say as the midpoint. Look at uh, looking at our kind of proxy for European markets here, for continental markets rather. This is messier this chart than than I typically like to have them. A bit too many lines, you could say. But this is a kind of channel that we've broken through, and we've we a bit like U.S. markets in a way with the, with the top pattern. We've broken through it, but we haven't really shown much conviction on breaking lower. We've basically held this gap support from April. Um, and you can see that we've just been hitting into that multiple times and failing to get lower um, which the support being hit that many times when it does break it's significant but it, the fact that it's holding this many times does suggest it's um, you know it's a, it's a strong level 
and um, eventually could get a rebound. But each rebound we've had so far in the US and the Germany 30 has been lower than the next. Um, and so I think the, the, the if we, if you are going to take the opinion that this support has held, a confirmation would probably come from if I just drop down to the four hour chart, you can see that trend line a bit bit more nicely. Uh, you probably want a, a, a close above above this line, uh, this declining trend line, to suggest that 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 sort of downtrend movement has um, has has stopped. Argued a bit of a bit of a kind of triangle pattern taking place here. But the general rule for triangle patterns, by the by, is that if they cross through two thirds of the of the distance of the triangle, at that point the the breakouts have uh, less meaning and um, don't tend to work as well. Once you cross that two thirds mark, um, it, you know they just kind of end up breaking one way and then dropping back into the triangle, breaking the other way and just giving false signals. So. I would say even though this is probably a triangle pattern it's 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 lost its usefulness at this point we mentioned currencies a bit at the start um, let's just jump straight to dolly yen since I had been talking about that and it's the biggest mover today and quite a crisp looking chart so we basically ran into 110 the 50 day moving average and this uh, this layer of, of support turned resistance at uh, about 110.70. We're not we didn't quite get there. You know, this is an example where, say, you're looking at this zone of uh, say 11, 111 and change down to 110.65. It's an example of how really looking at the same trade can uh, can be won or lost just depending on your aggressiveness to it. Now, if you were aggressive on this first line and had your trade beneath there, you know, even by a margin of say um, of 10 pips, then you were in on this trade and you you know, you're up plus 100 pips at this point, selling at that former support turn resistance, uh, which obviously acts as a bit of a pivot point here. Um, had you waited for maybe the midpoint of the zone? which is a, certainly a more conservative entry would have given you a lower risk you've obviously missed the trade so that's that's you know when we're talk, looking at these patterns here I understand that um, you know talking about support and resistance but quite how you tactically play them you know can make all the difference as to which trade you're, you're in and out of one thing worth noting that we're seeing a, a quite a big drop but nonetheless the, the trend has been quite positive recently in the short term certainly to my mind running into some longer term resistance uh, but possibility that this this area here, which was kind of like a little triangle pattern on the shorter term, uh, we're finding some resist uh, potentially this form of resistance is now going to be support again. So possible for a little bounce here from sort of 109.40 area that we currently find ourselves. But I would um, I would just issue some caution on that, um, given the, the 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 kind of longer term direction of travel. jump back to the uh, the euro dollar so that's wor worth just reminding yourselves of the long-term picture here is that we're pretty much in a horizontal range and so if your opinion is that, that we're in a range and that we're the price is currently on its way to travel back down towards the bottom of the range then obviously you're looking for opportunities to sell you know if you're of the opinion that this range is got a limited lifespan and we're about to get a breakthrough 115 at some point you know then you're looking for opportunities to buy but buying within the range is um, buying and selling within the, the range is obviously risky on the shorter term here still we're fairly trendless we took out this support but wasn't really much in the way of follow through we've already had a good drop down so my feeling is that probably we're due a bit of a bounce um, somewhere before uh, potential support down here at uh, 114.50. Due a bounce, but then maybe some some resistance to be found up in this kind of area from this low up to this peak. If you think we go ahead and back lower into the range, this would be a potential area. Um, other, otherwise, we're heading back up to this uh, this long-term pivot around the 114.60 type area.
have a look at sterling which we've also mentioned as, as rolling over a bit today <coughs> gonna snap these off so we're below the 200 day moving average and uh, certainly you know benefit of hindsight um, we've had a couple of opportunities to to sell up here I mean this one was obviously a big false break you know any any shorts at this previous peak on the first test uh, were probably losses but um, certainly when I was sort of selling on confirmation after that weekly drop you know you're obviously selling pretty low down there but uh, anywhere in within this candle you're doing well and then obviously we've we've just fallen away uh, you know here's an example of where you know charts can be very useful guides we dropped away right at that same peak uh, where we had the false break here here it proved perfect we didn't get a break we rolled over pretty largely um, and uh, today tried to push higher and if we drop down to the four hour chart we can see a bit more clearly what's happened is that we had this as our kind of support and our kind of this is where we had the big breakdown and uh, and you can see it's this breakdown candle here was the kind of daily pivot and then we had the false break there uh, and then we and then we finally broke through that which is what proved to be the, the resistance in the end so obviously advantageous in terms of timing your entry points um, if you thought that that daily drop was going to pull back a bit and you wanted to fine-tune your entry you drop down to the, the shorter time frame and, you know, and there's the advantage, obviously, of using the short time frames. There, you can see that's where the the short term breakout happened, and we got that pop back to there before rolling over again. Now we've had that rollover, but it you know depends whether we can break through. I think this series of uh, market closes in and around this 144.50 area is is what's going to determine whether we can come down and take out this low, but through 114.50 I think we're back to the low and maybe back down for a, a kind of proper test of this of this broken uh, declining trend line taking us back down to around 143 uh, a possibility here if we break through the 144.50 and you can say just well we've got this this former resistance turned into a support again and I think it could again be support but in the greater scheme of things we're, we're basically in a in a trading range now and um, the we had this big big move lower here um, which kind of put in the low but it seems like more like 140 50 140 60 is the um, the range that the price is respecting on the longer term at the moment so you could say that uh, uh, that decline in broken trend line would be the next layer of support but through there probably down to the 140 50 that would be drop into the the bottom of the range here what does it take for that to happen well obviously it takes some weakness in the pound it's not too hard to figure on that leading into the referendum uh, also requires some dollar strength um, and well we've had a hawkish fed talking about um, you know uh, more more uh, you know more potential for a June rate hike we've got more fed speak later today uh, Bullard and Williams are talking that could be a trigger for some dollar strength also got manufacturing data I would say that's more likely to be weak on the weaker side but could easily be dismissed because it's been weak for a while and obviously later in the week we've got the uh, the US GDP data apologies I've just uh, managed to log myself out What can I call that? Technical disruption? Moving swiftly on. Let's just get to crude oil here. Now, crude is um, obviously an important factor for where equities go as well. We've seen a bounce from uh, sub 27 up to nearly 50. And so I think what's, um, what's important at the moment is that um, we've, we had this drop down to 38.2% retra retracement of this latest leg higher, uh, but we haven't had much follow through on that. So we had buyers down here, but uh, no one really buying again on the momentum up here. So it looks like we might need a deeper dip to find new buyers lower down. And uh, the 61.8% retracement fits right about on 46 and our and our long-term kind of pivot 
here. So I think that could be where we're headed next. Um, if we, you know, if we close lower today, uh, that would be the lowest since uh, Monday last week. So the lowest in a week. Um, that 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 the fact that we closed for the lowest in the week could, you know, give uh, <coughs> see a few people step aside until that until we hit that 46 mark. But we'll keep in mind that we're still making higher highs and higher lows. So the trend is still higher. So it's still a bit early days to call the top. Uh, but if you were to call the top, you know, around just the fact that we almost hit $50 um, seems increasingly likely we have. Over to gold. It's worth noting in gold that we've, you know, we've had, f we're aiming for a fourth day of weakness in gold. We had that, you know, the big move lower, obviously on the same day that the dollar spiked higher, the gold gold spiked lower on those on those Fed minutes, uh, and then we've drifted lower ever since. But we've not had a close below one two fifty yet. So some sort of demand for gold in at one two fifty. I think if we get a close, as I mentioned, on the chart forum here. A, ch a close below 1250, I think we're dropping down to the this um, this inclining channel, uh, and that would fit nicely with these lows down here, about 1230. So really, 1250 is the test the gold's facing at the moment. Look at silver while we're at it. Um, if there, if there was any other markets you wanted to look at, by the way, now would be the time. So, let me just scale up to give that support line some context. So, here we are. We've we've basically come up. We've we've tried to challenge that that peak from um, a year ago, and uh, failed. And so I think the next layer of support would be, you know, this um, basically somewhere in above the uh, the 16 mark is where this this quite big loss of momentum in metals could perhaps find some demand. But obviously, again, for for metals to get bid up, that require generally requires a bit of weakness in the dollar, which at the moment doesn't appear to be, um, you know, doesn't fundamentally appear to be the case. Well, probably one one gauge of, as to whether this dollar strength can continue and the meaning that has for the FX, the other FX pairs and, and commodities and, and stocks um, is 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 going to be the the GDP data. So that would be a big one to watch. So I think that's about it. We'll uh, we'll call it a day there. Thank you very much for attending and and good luck trading this week. Jasper Lawler signing out.